Hi everybody, this is Laura. I just thought I'd give you something cute to look at. This is my little tiger kitty. She just, she's so cute. I don't even know what I named her. I guess Tiger. And this here is Wilbur Babe Milford or what's another famous pig? Porky, I guess. I don't know, but I call him Wilbur. He's just my little stuffed pink piggy. My little sister gave these little animals to me. Anyway, um, I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to try to talk and see if I can figure out my own health history going on. When I was 11, or before I was 11, I was a pretty healthy kid. I was real thin and able to run relay races in the fifth grade. I used to win... Uh, second and third place ribbons, maybe a first place ribbon every now and then. But I remember uh, around the age of 11 or 5th grade, I, I started to cough when I ran. And that was the first thing that I noticed going wrong with my health. Um, now, nothing else happened that I know of until the summer of 1986, the 4th of July. I... I was up in Stockton visiting uh, my cousins and, and my uncle and aunt, and there is a man-made lake in the city of Lodi, California, and um, they had this huge, awesome Fourth of July party, barbecuing, fireworks, the whole works. And I went to this, you know, to to this lake with my family, and we swam a lot, just hours and hours, from maybe like noon to past sunset. And I went under the water several times. I might have even accidentally, you know, swallowed water or gotten it into my mouth. Uh, a few days later when I went back home to Fresno, I noticed I was feeling really crummy. Uh, my co One of my cousins that I swam with all day in that man-made lake in Lodi, um, they reported feeling sick for, you know, maybe a day or two. But me, I developed a very painful thrush in my mouth, a white coating, like a yeast infection, and it was very, very painful. It was just horrible. I couldn't drink water because that's how bad the pain was, and my mom cooked me some very soft rice, and, and I couldn't even eat that, and I was vomiting a lot, and my gums swelled so badly that all you could see was the very bottoms of all my teeth. That's how badly they were swelling. So he thought it was, this one doctor thought it was gingivitis. And I thought, that's ridiculous. That's just this gum disease from, you know, just certain things that you eat or whatever that you have to treat with, you know, toothpaste and whatever. Or maybe, maybe something else. But anyway, it was not gingivitis because I was sick. I was just dog sick. So, um... I lost 15 pounds in about a two-week period, which, of course, at age 16, I loved that because, you know, I thought I was just huge. I was 130 pounds, and I just thought I was so fat in those years. Um, so, the, uh, 1981, I started getting the asthma or the coughs. 1986, I swam in that lake and got real sick. I eventually recovered from this whatever illness it was, but I never got a real answer as to what it was. Um, and I don't even remember what the second doctor did as far as treating. So in from 86 to about mm, 93, there was no significant changes. I never really felt right again after the lake, and I never, I just never felt quite the same. I never felt quite as you know healthy. But again, nothing from 86 to about 93. In 93, I started developing really bad migraines and very bad asthma and the sensation of things in my throat, you know, just things that were stuck in my throat I couldn't really swallow well. So um, I, you know, went to different doctors, went to the ER a few times for asthma attacks, was put on prednisone in 1995, a hefty, hefty, hefty dose of prednisone. And um, they kept telling me it was bronchitis, bronchitis, bronchitis for the longest time. 
And then finally somebody said, I think you have asthma, because I was just going to the ER so often. Um, I also was working at the IRS in the Fresno, California, the IRS building, and I worked there for five seasons. And I remember the migraines pretty much started there, and I heard rumors about the IRS building, uh, the old one. They've moved it to another location since, but I heard rumors about the old one that it had a lot of different things like asbestos and stuff like that. <coughs> so anyway, um, in 93 I became really sick with the asthma and the migraine headaches and the prednisone they put me on um, did absolutely nothing for the asthma. It did not relieve the symptoms at all. All it did was give me a lot of side effects. I developed a moon, a moon kind of a face, kind of round face with barely any neck. I developed, um, almost looked like a goiter, you know. My face was just really round and really uh, droopy looking, kind of just everything looked sickly. It was Cushing's type, whatever, you know, Cushing's disease from the prednisone. Um, I began to gain weight really badly about this same time. I became very ill in July of um, 1995 uh, with pneumonia, and then shortly after I sort of got over that, I moved to Stockton from Fresno. I had spent 25 years in Fresno, and in 1995 I finally moved out of Fresno and I went to Stockton. And. Um, when I got to Stockton, it was like a, I had this new, I had a very new lease on life. I had been feeling so poorly and so ill for so many years. So moving to Stockton uh, to live with my mom, it was just a real, I was so full of joy the first few years. And I, you know, went to school. I became a nurse. Um, I had already been a caretaker. I became a CNA, which is a nurse's assistant. And I also, uh, went on to become an RN, and I graduated uh, from college in the year 2000. Um, later on, uh, I noticed more gait, weight, weight gain, and I, I noticed some unexplained falls uh, one time while I was working in Stockton at the job I loved. There was one job out of all of them that I just absolutely loved, and that was the one in Stockton. I uh, was running around with some red blood cells getting ready to give a man a transfusion and I was, you know, really running around getting the paperwork ready and stuff and suddenly my right ankle collapsed out from under me. And then I had another couple of incidents very similar to that on the job. Um, and there was one time where I fell just trying to get into my car to go to work and I ended up in the ER in my own hospital that I worked at. Eventually, my mom and I moved away from Stockton. Um, my my grandma was having health problems, and we moved to the town of Yuba City. And then shortly after that, maybe a year later, we decided we wanted to live in the foothills, so we lived in Grass Valley. While we were in Yuba City around the year 2003, I had this episode of palpitations in my chest, and I couldn't couldn't understand what was going on. My legs began to swell, and I never did shake that. I, I began to have this chronic problem with swollen legs and you know different things. And I swollen legs mainly, and and the the palpitations and some mild mild chest pain. I just kind of figured, oh, it's nothing. It's just you know, maybe it's just stress or something, and maybe I'm eating too much salt. So I ignored that, and then we moved to Grass Valley, and I had a, several episodes of something that I was just flabbergasted by. Maybe a week after we moved into our new home in Grass Valley, I had this bleeding episode that was, I was throwing up blood, and I was sitting on the toilet doing blood, too. And it was really really scary. And I went to the doctor and they didn't really say a whole lot. They said, well, you might have hemorrhoids or you might have, you know, uh, a fissure in there somewhere. <coughs> in July of 2007, we spent three years in Grass Valley. So 
During the last summer we lived there, I had this episode for about six hours where I couldn't remember my own name. I was sitting at the computer, and out of nowhere I started getting really kind of confused. And I went and laid down on the couch. I should have called 911 about a stroke, but I I just, I think I was sort of in denial. I, I just laid it on the couch for six hours. My mom was out of town, and... Um, I just laid there and I, I couldn't remember my middle name. I couldn't remember the president. I couldn't remember a lot of things that, that should have been easy to remember. And I had to repeat to myself over and over, you know, my full name and today's date and whatever. It was real scary. I didn't get treatment for it, so I just I recovered on my own after six hours. And then we moved to Idaho in September of 07. Uh, and we spent a year there with nothing really going on with me. But then in November of 08, about a little over a year after we moved to Idaho, I was sleeping and I woke up with blood coming out of my throat and I started coughing blood out of my throat. It wasn't my lungs because I could feel the blood in my throat and I could also feel pain in my throat. So they swabbed me and tested me for strep and I was negative and then nothing further came of that. I had a couple episodes in the following weeks of small amounts of bleeding from the esophagus or the throat. I knew it wasn't my lungs and I knew it wasn't a nosebleed, you know, how nosebleeds back up and he spit out blood. It wasn't anything like that. It was just strictly my, my, my throat. So, um, in 2009, I fell at an, a hospice patient's house and hurt both of my kneecaps and hurt both of my shoulders trying to stop myself from falling. And uh, The pain after that accident was so great that I quit my job and I never have, since that day, it was like May of 2009, I have not practiced any kind of nursing. After I lost my job and lost my livelihood as a registered nurse, I I tried, I tried to stick it out for a year after that, borrowing money from relatives, all, all kinds of stuff, and I just couldn't, couldn't keep doing that. So I came to Fresno again to live here for a while in Fresno. And every so often I go back to Idaho on the Greyhound or on a plane. And I uh, also, whenever I want to really get away, I go to the, to the ocean. I love the ocean. It's my favorite thing in the world. So I came to Fresno in April of 2010 to try to establish some kind of answers for these health things that have been going on. And I felt pretty good the first maybe year I was li living here, almost full time. I moved here to Fresno around my dad's house in um, April of 10. I had already uh, been talking about how I was bleeding abnormally in, through my GI tract. And they did a colonoscopy and they did remove uh, a re really huge polyp in my colon. They also found a nodule on my stomach and a really terrible esophageal um, inflammation which probably caused the bleeding, they said. But after I had those tests done, they just gave me a new prescription for my GERD, and they told me to come back three years uh, from from then, three years, to come do another colonoscopy. I'm due, I'm due this year for a new one. And then nothing more happened until uh, October of 2011. I had some very frightening, very hard chest pain all over my chest. Like it started from the right side and it went to the left. I had that one night and then the next night I just had a small episode with the left, left side of my chest. <clears throat> so that's when I found out that I might have congestive heart failure and that's why my legs have been swollen. I I just, uh, he gave me these pills to dissolve under my tongue and he gave me some good new blood pressure pills and he gave me some diuretic and worked for a long time and everything was okay. I mean, I had a heart failure, but a lot of people have it, especially in my family. All of my, um, on both sides of my family, there's a lot of heart disease. So, uh, 
I've been going along, you know, treating, you know, managing my symptoms with the heart disease. But I begin to develop really bad abdominal uh, swelling and really bad abdominal pain. Um, not only a constant tender pain where, you know, all I have to do is lean up against the counter to do the dishes and it hurts. And, and I, I started to get these jabs in the right side of my abdomen about three or four weeks ago. I had episodes of fluid in my lungs. I'd wake up and my lungs were just full, especially my left lung. And I'd sit up and it'd go away and I thought, well, maybe it's uh, asthma, maybe it's just the heart failure. It got to where it was happening every morning, every morning, um, waking up feeling like I'm drowning. So, and then on top of all that, I've had so many doctors calling me a malinger or a liar or a hypochondriac or I just don't want to work for a living, I don't want to produce and all that stuff. So I got really angry when it started happening more often, you know, all this bronchitis, you know, all these different things that they were telling me, these minor things, you have asthma, take some more prednisone, oh, you just have bronchitis even though you're coughing up blood. It's just really, really sad, the little things that they just, they just come up with these redundant uh, diagnoses trying to just get you out of their hair, take this lousy little antibiotic and go home. Anyway, um, when I began to wake up every single morning feeling like I was drowning and then having increased chest pain, increased abdominal pain, I said, the heck with my doctors that are six miles away and the heck with that hospital that's only four miles away. I'm going another 20 miles to Fresno in the city and, and I'm, I'm going to go and get this taken care of. I don't know what's going on, but I'm going... So I did go uh, last Tuesday the 11th, and I was very out of breath. And the littlest things get me out of breath now. Just you sitting here talking is getting me out of breath. So I went there, and they put oxygen on me, and they uh, took me and did a, an ultrasound on my right leg, which had been swelling around the knee and the ankle to try to see if I had a blood clot because they were concerned that I not only couldn't breathe but that my legs was really swollen. Well, the, there's no clot according to them. They did a real good scan on it and there was no clot. So then they did the CT scan of my chest, you know, which covers the lungs, the heart, uh, and probably part of the liver. And it also takes, pic uh, you know, that same CT will cover, you know, your esophagus too. It covers that area. Anything from your chin to your, you know, belly button. That's what a chest CT uh, sees. So what they found was a suspicious mass in the r left lung. They found another mass in the left breast tissue, which I had been hurting real bad on my left side for a while. Interrupted, my battery suddenly ran out. Anyway, um... So they found a, a mass on the left breast, a mass in the left side of my chest, another mass in the lining around my heart. They found some very, very suspicious uh, inflammation in my uh, esophagus. They also found that I have an enlarged heart and I also have thickened lung linings, whatever that is. And they also said that you're, I have definitely uh, worsened with my CHF and I might even have ascites, which is the abdominal fluid that's built up. He gave me one new diuretic, no, yeah, one new diuretic to use with my Lasix. And he also gave me more pain medicine and two more blood pressure pills. I am on three different blood pressure medicines and two diuretics. And he um, reminded me that, that salt intake had to be modified, you know, quite a bit. Um, so anyway, what I'm saying is now I, I'm a little suspicious that I have either an autoimmune disease that's attacking all my major organs or I have cancer. I'm not really sure. Um, I have a dry cough. Every so often it's productive, but not very often. And I have chest pain when I cough. And that's 
Okay, so this battery is driving me nuts. Um, just wanted to say that uh, I'm not real sure what's going on, but I'm going to start doing updates on my health history. Um, I'm hoping it's not cancer. My mom, my mom was just diagnosed with PMR, which is a immune system disease, autoimmune. I mean. Anyway, so I think I'll close since the batteries aren't letting me talk. Um, I think I'm going to just do a vlog about my health for a little while until I have some solid answers.